Good morning. Good morning. Sana napakagandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Uh, all the way from uh, Chicago, we want to uh, bring this message for we know that uh, while we are uh, enjoying our time with this uh, quarantine period, and I know that will it will not last long. And uh, praise God that even here in the United States, the good president is also uh, uh, thinking on how to reopen soon right. the, the business, the economy. Because uh, I am just appreciating his move that, uh, you know, he knew that to quarantine people long enough, it's not uh, good. And so uh, uh, many things that is happening now as a result of our prayer as believers. And so uh, we would like to continue pr to provide uh, encouragement from the Word of God. Uh, and uh, I am so glad that my good brother here is here with me and I... Trust that the Lord has put in his heart something that uh, he will be sharing with you and all of us will be encouraged. So, uh, Brother Ben, uh, Brother Bill, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it's good to be here this morning. Uh, it's morning for you. It's yeah. evening for us. But uh, Lord knows our hearts. And uh, I, I just want to, uh, I've got some things in my heart that I want to share from a study. Last time I yeah. talked to you, mm -hmm. we had talked about uh, look unto the fields uh, that they're white unto harvest. Yeah, right. In that same chapter, uh, chapter In, 4 of John, so if you have yeah, your yeah. Bibles with you, I'd like you to go and get your Bibles and uh, turn over to John chapter 4. And uh, what we're going to do is uh, look at the last part of uh, chapter 4. Mm -hmm. uh, Jesus has moved on from Samaria where he uh, met the, the woman at the well and where he had uh, shared with her, and she had come to faith, and she was all excited, went into town of Samaria, came out, and, and all the town people came out, and they invited Jesus to stay for a couple of days. And it was during that time that uh, uh, Jesus uh, revealed himself to them, and many had come to faith. Mm -hmm. Well, now we come to this end of the chapter 4, and what, what my title today really is, that I'd like to talk about, is Faith for All Kinds of Unbelief. Faith for all kinds of unbelief. For all kinds of unbelief. And we're going to Praise see that in That's the study good. today because uh, uh, we have an incident right here where uh, I'm going to go ahead and read chap chapter 4, verse 46 to the end of the chapter. And then I'm going to just spend some time where we're going to talk about this. So, so verse 46, Jesus came again into Canaan of Galilee where he made the water wine. Mm -hmm. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went up unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. And an older man said unto him, Sir, come down. Uh, lest my child die. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way, thy son lives. Wow. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. Mm -hmm. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Your son lives. Mm -hmm. And then inquired him of them the hour when he began to amend or feel better. Mm -hmm. And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour, the fever left him. Mm -hmm. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son lives, and himself believes, and his whole house. This again is the second miracle that Jesus did when he was come out of Judea mm -hmm. into Galilee. Now, we don't know a whole lot about this nobleman. What we yes. do know that he was probably a man of who was a politician, maybe he was in the king's court. We, mm -hmm. We're not really sure. We don't even know if he was really a Jew or a Gentile. What we do know is that this man uh, had a terrific need. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, many times our Lord uh, brings about into our life, and you know, we've been talking about this whole thing about the virus and being locked in, and, mm -hmm. and we call, we've been calling it affliction. Yeah, You know, because as, as God brings affliction, he brings it into our lives for a reason. And this man certainly had an affliction, did he mm -hmm. not? You know, this, this man, uh, you know, he, he uh, had a terrific need. And his problem 
uh, he came to a point where he didn't know what to do. Mm. Now, you can imagine with this man being a nobleman, somebody who probably in the king's court was a very rich man, mm -hmm. and I'm sure that he must have spent much, much time, effort, and money trying to find a cure for his son. But see, what I want you to see then is that many times, I've got a few verses that I'd like us just to kind of travel through because there are those that really require yes. signs and miracles in order to come to faith. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk a little bit about this, but I want you to see that how Jesus, in his earthly life, when he was here, all his works and his miracles were done right. for a purpose. And really it was to grab a hold of people and bring people to faith. Mm -hmm. So there's a few passages I'd like to read to you. I'd like to go over to... Uh, to uh, Chapter 3, and if you recall, this is when Nicodemus came to Jesus by right. night one night, okay? And here's what he says when he came to Jesus at night. He says, the same came in John chapter 3, verse 2, he says, the same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no one can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Mm -hmm. And so they acknowledge, right. this spiritual leader acknowledged that Jesus is somebody who has to be sent from God mm -hmm. because no one speaks like that and no one does the miracles like he does. So again, you could see because of Jesus' works and mm -hmm. words, people are being drawn to him, okay? Even this religious leader. Now I want to show you a couple of more passages. Go to John chapter 6. If you go over to John chapter 6, look at verse 2. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, wow. which he did on them that were diseased. Mm -hmm. Okay? Go to uh, verse 14. Then when those men, when they had seen the miracles that Jesus did, said, this is of a truth, that prophet that should come into the world. So here, the miracles that Jesus are doing, there are, no, there are some who are now questioning and saying, this must be the Messiah. No mm. one does miracles like this. Only the Messiah, when he comes, will do yes. these types of work. And then I want you to go over to, to chapter 7, uh, verse 31. And here you see it says that, And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ come, will he do more miracles than what this man has mm. done? Mm. Uh, so what I want you to get a feel for right here is that, that Jesus, in his ministry when he was here on earth, is ministering to a multitude of people. needs, okay? Mm -hmm. And one of the things that he's doing, see, there's a lot of people say that unless they see signs and wonders, they're not going to believe, mm -hmm. okay? And, and we know people like that, but that brings us to the reason. What I want to share with you is that I want to speak to you about our unbelief, mm -hmm. okay? And, and what I want you to see that there's three stages of unbelief that Jesus meets the demand to bring mm -hmm. them from unbelief to faith, mm -hmm. okay? Now, now, bear with me a little bit. Hold on. I'm going to take you through this, but we're going to yes. look at these three mm -hmm. stages of unbelief. And the first one is what we call the stage where all I need to see is the beauty of Christ, right. okay? Good. There is an unbelief, and this is probably the highest stage, Mm -hmm. You know, if, if you are on having unbelief, but you're at this high stage of unbelief, that all you really need is to see the beauty of Christ. Amen. Okay? And then there's a second stage of unbelief. And this one demands the words of Christ. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's not enough that I would just see the beauty of Christ, but I must be convinced. I, I need to have He's his worried. words in my, in my life, in my heart. Right in order to take me to a stage of unbelief to faith in Christ, mm -hmm. okay? Well, then there's a, a third one of, of unbelief, and this is the one that we're kind of talking about here today. Mm -hmm. and, and in our story here with the nobleman, okay? He needs a miracle. Mm -hmm. And this is the kind of unbelief that says, I, I need more than just seeing the beauty of Christ. I need more than just hearing the words of Christ. I, I have to see a miracle. Mm -hmm. And so... This is, this is the, the third stage, all right? Now, l let me see if I could summarize this and, and, and you could see what this is, okay? 
First of all, let's look at that first one of unbelief mm-hmm. that demands the beauty of Christ, that Christ and his beauty uh-huh. will answer that demand and bring these to faith. I, I want you to think about this, okay? Right. I want you to think about, it It really falls into people like, when. remember when John the Baptist, uh, in the beginning of the book of John, he mm-hmm. says, behold, the Lamb of Lamb God, God, which takes away the mm-hmm. sins of the world. the world. He says, behold, in other words, just look at who Christ is. Yes. And, right. and what happened was, is that many started to follow him. Amen. Some of his disciples, he just walked by and he said, hey, come follow me. I'm going to make you fishers of men. Mm-hmm. It was the beauty of Christ that drew them to faith. Right. And they left everything and they followed him. Okay. Well, let's look at the second one. The second one really is what we see here with the Samaritans. You, and, and I'll give you an illustration right here. Do you remember when he came to the woman at the well? Mm-hmm. John you know, chapter it's, four. It's, yeah, John chapter 4, the same chapter yeah. we're in here. But when he asked her for a drink of water, you know what her response was? She wasn't looking at the beauty of Christ. Mm-hmm. She, in fact, when she looked at Jesus, she just called him a Jew. Mm-hmm. He said, would you, a Jew, right. come and ask of a Samaritan woman for a drink of water? Right. And so she sees Christ, mm-hmm. but the beauty of Christ wasn't what attracted her. Mm-hmm. What was it that, that she was a woman of unbelief? It was the very words of Jesus that came to her. Yes. Did yes. it not? Yes. You know, he came to her and he, he started this communication and he, he started to search her heart. Mm-hmm. And, and it was the very words of Jesus that, that really spoke down deep in her heart. You know, he told her some things about... Uh, you know, go call your husband. She says, well, I have no husband. He <laughs> says, well, you've said that right. <laughs> because you don't just have, well, you've had five husbands. And the man that you're with is, isn't even your husband. Yes. And then she goes on, well, I'm, I perceive you're, you must be a prophet or something. Well, then he goes on and he really comes through and he finally comes right out. And she says, when Messiah comes, he will tell us all these things. And he looks right at her and he says, I am he. And you remember what she did? She got so excited that she didn't even get her water. She left her water pot there, and she went into town. Mm -hmm. And what did she do? She started telling others about this Jesus. I this is the Christ. Is this not? He told me everything about Mm -hmm. me that that nobody else would have known. But he told me, "Is not this the Christ?" And you remember then the people then started coming out uh, out of Samaria, and they came out out of the city into the fields. And what was it that he said to them? If you look at these verses right here, let's go and look at John chapter 4 and look at verse 26. This is where Jesus said unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. He made it very clear that he was the Messiah. Now I want you to see response of the people themselves, okay? Look over at verse 42 now. Well, let, let, yeah, and verse 42, and he said unto the woman, Now we believe, not because of thy saying, for we have heard him ourselves, and know that it is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. Do you see what happened here? Mm-hmm. She went out, she was full of faith, went out, started telling others about Christ, and they said they came out to hear, and they heard the precious words of Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it said that many of them came to faith and they believed. So this is the second one. See, it's not the beauty of Christ that attracted them. It was the very words of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, now we come to this third one right here. And that has a lot to do with this particular man, the nobleman. Okay. He is a man. And and, and let's get into the story about him because I want you to understand this. This man has a tremendous need, mm-hmm. okay? And, and something about this man is that he tried, he, he, I'm sure that before he came to Jesus, he tried all ways to, to find an answer for his sick son, mm-hmm. and he was getting worse. And some of us are like that. We, we, really, we really have come to the end of our life, and I'm telling you, sometimes this is what God does. I wrote in my Bible here uh, from many years ago when I did this study before. And he said, I brought in here, affliction is often God's medicine. Mm -hmm. 
He uses it to bring people to Christ. Now, here was a man, and by the way, he does need a miracle, does he not? Mm -hmm. He needs a miracle. Now, I want you to know, he wasn't coming to Jesus for any kind of spiritual reason. He came, he had a physical need. Mm -hmm. His son was dying. And he had no, he was at the wit's end of his life. He didn't know what to do. But he mm -hmm. heard something about this Savior, Jesus, a healer mm -hmm. in the land of, of Galilee, a one who is able to raise even the dead to life, mm -hmm. bring blind men to sight, mm -hmm. men who are lame, he gets them to, so they could jump for joy. But I want you to know one thing here. When we're, when we're going to look at this, that Jesus meets the demand of these types of unbelief, mm -hmm. okay? But here's one thing that we need to understand. This man had to come to the point where he humbled himself. Praise the Lord. You see, he was a nobleman. Amen. Very rich. Mm -hmm. And he's at his wit end. But in order for him, do you know what? This man had to go anywhere from 16 to 20 miles. That was the distance that he traveled just to get to where Jesus was. Right. Perfect. And there you see a first step of coming to faith is our humbling ourselves before God. Amen. And that is really, really important. Well, I want to go on and start talking about this man's faith, okay? Mm -hmm. And I want to see how, I want you to see how he moves from, from having no faith, being fearful, and, ha and having a faith that grows. Mm -hmm. See, it goes from not only, I need a miracle, but then it goes to the point where he hears the word of God. He hears Jesus. And then we're going to see towards the end that he has a fantastic faith. That it has grown so much. Okay. So let's take a look. I'm just going to, I'm not going to take a whole lot of time. But I'm just going to walk you through, through this particular story. And we're going to take a look at it. Okay. First of all, I want you to see here at um, verse 47. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee... He went unto them, besought him that he would come down and heal his son. Now, first of all, I want you to understand that this man did not have a full grasp of who Jesus really right. was. Because he's saying, Jesus, you've got to come with me. Mm -hmm. Now, isn't this the Jesus that created the world, that he was the word, and the word became flesh and dwelt among us? John 1.1. 1, 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Isn't he the one that spoke the worlds into existence? Mm -hmm. Okay. So he, he doesn't even quite know anything all about Jesus. He doesn't realize that this is God in the flesh. Because G he says, you got to come with me. But we're going to see Jesus doesn't go with him at all, does he? Mm -hmm. Okay? And the second thing, if you don't come, Jesus, he's <laughs> going to die. Mm -hmm. Now, we know later on in our studies in John is that that later on one does die and he's able to go and even mm -hmm. once somebody is in a grave for four days, he raises them from the dead. Okay, mm -hmm. so let, let's go and look at this a little bit further. Look at verse 48. Then said Jesus unto him, except you see signs and wonders, you'll not believe. Wow. Now, now, let me just say this. Some, some of you might say, well, what, this is a little confusing. What do you mean that that?" I have an unbelief that only the beauty of Christ will bring me to faith. Or, mm. you know, it's only the words of Christ that will bring me to faith. Or I need a mm. miracle in that, okay? But I want you to know that God knows your need. Amen. That's true. Okay? He knows your need. And I'm telling you, some of you do need a miracle. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that this Jesus, this, this one who is God in the flesh, is the same yesterday. Today. Today, today and, forever. and forevermore, the Lord. okay? I know even my own life, I could give testimony Amen. Of, of a miracle. I had, a, I had, you know, I have nine sisters in my family. It's a big family. Big family, yeah. Nine American. sisters, yeah. American is <laughs> yeah. down there, that's yeah, a big right. family. <laughs> but but anyway. I want you to know that one of my younger sisters, she, she was only four years old. Wow. And we lived in a busy, busy area of Chicago, and she was a little kid, and she ran out into the traffic. Wow. She was hit by a car, thrown up in the air. Mm -hmm. The next car came by, she came down, and he hit her. She went up in the air again, and she came down on the third car. Mm -hmm. I mean, let me tell you this. 
almost every bone in her body was broken. Wow. Whew. And and when we got word, she they sent her to the emergency in a hospital. I want you to know the seven professional doctors gave her up for dead. Wow. They said she's not going to make it. Mm-hmm. She was in a coma for 23 days. 23 days. 23 days she was unconscious. Wow. She was just... From head to toe, every bone almost was broken. She was in like a big cast. Mm-hmm. But I want you to notice, now, now at that time, I was not really a believer. Mm-hmm. You know, my, I came from a, a, a large family. We were a Catholic family. But I remember my mother taking me to church. We went to the church three times a day and prayed for my sister. Now, we needed a miracle. Seven doctors said she wasn't going to live. We needed a miracle. You know, to this day, I want you to know that she is a grandmother. She has grandchildren. And, and she has, and, and that's been over 40-something years ago. Mm-hmm. But I want you to know, at that time, maybe in my life, I didn't fully understand it, but God used mm-hmm. that. that. That stuck with me. And so there are t- what I'm trying to say to you is that God knows your need. And whatever your unbelief is, he could meet it, except for one. I left out one unbelief that I think is really important that we, that we must take a look at, okay? And this is the unbelief that says, I will not believe. Even though I may hear the words, even though I may see the beauty of Christ, even though I may see his signs and wonders, you know, this is the kind of people mm. that was the Pharisees in, in Jerusalem, you know, the majority of the, of the Jews who really said, we don't want no part of Jesus. Get yeah. out of here. In fact, it got to the point where they even said, crucify him. Right. Crucify him. Now, there's a danger in that. See, that's a kind of unbelief that Jesus will not meet the demand of. Mm-hmm. Because that's an unbelief that says, I refuse to believe the truth that's being presented before me. Mm-hmm. But for those others, I want you to know that God loves you. God has compassion Amen. on you. And you may be at different stages of your life, but this God knows where you're at. Some mm-hmm. of you are seekers right now. You, you, you haven't even come to faith. Right. You, you're one of these areas of unbelief, but I want you to know that Jesus is the answer for you. Amen. Amen. And so what I want to do is finish up then on this story with this man because I want you to see this progression Mm -hmm. of faith, okay? So now the nobleman said on verse 49, said unto him, Sir, come down ere my child dies. So you can see, again, he doesn't have a full understanding of the power of Jesus, that he just got to speak the word. Mm -hmm. Because remember, there was another one that that was very similar to this story. Do you remember the centurion? And he had a servant that had, that was uh, being uh, possessed by a devil, and he had epilepsy, and and he came to Jesus, and and he wanted him, and this wasn't even a Jew; he was a centurion, a Roman mm-hmm. centurion. And see, there's no see. Let me tell you this: whether you're a centurion, whether you're a servant, whether you're poor, whether you're rich, Jesus can meet your need. Right. He has no respect right. to person. Okay. But do you remember the story of centurion? Jesus, well, I'll go with you. Here, I'm going to go and I'll, I'll heal you, sir. And he says, oh, no. He says, and he calls him Lord. Yeah. And he mm-hmm. says, Lord, you know, I'm not worthy that you would even come to my house. Just Amen. say the word. Yes. He Just says, I'm a man of authority. And when I tell my, my servants or my army to do this, this, or that, they do that. Not all, he says, I'm a man of authority, but... You know authority. Yeah, and he knows that Jesus has this authority. Amen. And he tells Jesus, just say the word, Jesus. Amen. But this man, he doesn't understand that. He says, Jesus, you got to come with. And look at verse 50. Jesus said to him, go your way, thy son lives. Mm-hmm. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken, and he went his way. Now, mm-hmm. we see his faith start growing. See, he needs a miracle. Mm-hmm. Okay, but now he hears the words of Jesus. Just go. Mm -hmm. Your your son is healed. And what does the man do? He goes. He 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 goes. He's listening now to the words of God. You see the Mm -hmm. how he's making it through these phases. Okay, he needed a miracle, and Jesus met that by his grace and mercy. And now Jesus is speaking words to him. 
And now he's obedient to it and he's walking. Mm -hmm. And he's going back. Praise the Lord. And then look at verse 51. And as he went, was now going down. See, remember I said it was 16 to 18 miles or 16 to 20 miles. Mm -hmm. So he's on his way back. And in the meantime, at the moment this servant got healed, this son Praise got the healed, the servants left and tried to find the nobleman. Mm -hmm. And they met halfway. Wow, good. And, 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 and right away, look at, look at these choirs of him. They, they tell him, and they said, thy son lives. And then they then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. Meaning that word amend means getting better. Yes. And he said, no, 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 no. When mm. Jesus does a work, he does a full, complete work. Amen. Your son is healed. Complete. Praise yeah, complete. It's, it's, it's finished. He's done. Mm. And then uh, it says here, they tell them at the seventh hour when the fever left him. So now look at this man's faith is even growing more. Remember, he was full of fear. And then he needed a miracle. Mm -hmm. And then he's hearing Jesus' word and he's mm -hmm. obeying, he's going back. But now look at this faith that he has. So the father knew that it was at this hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son lives and himself believed, and his whole house. Amen. Now, see, that's what full faith will do for you. Mm -hmm. See, when your faith grows, and, and let me just say this to all of us. Jesus wants you to grow in faith. You see, some of you may be just having that, you know, it, it's the beauty of Christ. And maybe some of you came to faith that way. You saw maybe in your family when you're raised up in a Christian home. Mm -hmm. Maybe you saw it exemplified in your mom and dad. Or, or maybe you knew somebody whose life was totally changed. Mm -hmm. And now you see that their life is different. And you see the beauty of Christ in them. But see, others of you, you've come to faith when you started to get into the Word of God. And let me just say this. For your faith to grow, mm -hmm. to get into a confident faith, a contagious faith yes. is you need to get into the Word of God. Grow in grace. Amen. And then the more you walk and are obedient to God, the more your faith grows. Gross. Isn't it not? Yes. Isn't that true? So let me just finish with these questions, okay? Let me ask this. Where is your faith? Amen. Where's your faith today? Or let me ask another question. What type of unbelief do you have? Amen. What is it that Jesus needs to do in order for you to come to faith? See, whatever your unbelief demands, I want you to know that Jesus is the answer. Praise the Lord. He's yes, always the answer. There's no one else that we know of in this universe. God made it very clear, and Jesus made it very clear before he went back to with his Father. I'm mm -hmm. the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes in the Father but by me. See, that's salvation. And, and brothers and sisters, if you're listening, and you want your faith to grow, trust Jesus. Believe in him. See, faith isn't blind. Faith is trusting in the very person of God. Amen? Amen. Thanks it's trusting God's word. So let me just say that. I wrote this down. It says, whenever you are in your unbelief, Jesus is the answer. But beware. Beware of the unbelief that continues to say no. Mm -hmm. And so I'm saying to some of you right here that maybe, you know, we're all in our families and some of you are really coming to the point where, you know, God is shaking you, getting your attention through this time of being held together. And, and maybe you're, you're frustrated. Maybe you're, uh, you're, you're fearful and, and you don't have answers for life. I want you to know that the very first thing you need to do is what this nobleman did. He humbled himself. Amen. See, faith has no room for pride. Right. There's right. no room whatsoever mm -hmm. for pride when it comes to faith. We have to trust God. I want to bring you to one last verse, and this is the warning, okay? Beware of the unbelief that continues to say no. Eventually, what did they say? Crucify him. Right. Crucify him. I mean, this is the words that they said, but I want you to look at Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. 
In verse 7, he says this, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. See, the Lord. when you come to faith in Jesus, he's making it very clear right here, you shall inherit all things. And I will be his God, and he shall be my son or daughter. But the fearful, and here it is, unbelieving, and the abominable, and the murderer, the whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake of fire, mm -hmm. which burns with fire and brimstone, which is Amen. the second death. See, that's the danger part. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us started in this life with unbelief. Right. You know, it took one of these ways of, of either seeing the beauty of Christ, Amen. hearing the words of Christ, mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and the, and then just just following Christ, having confidence mm -hmm. in Christ. Amen. You know, some of us, like I said, did need miracles, and by God's grace and compassion, mm -hmm. He knows our hearts and He knows exactly what you need. Mm -hmm. So my 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 uh, encouragement to you is take a look at the story again. Yeah. And and watch this man's faith grow. Mm -hmm. And and it's a challenge to each one of us. Amen. Where are you in your walk with the Lord? Mm -hmm. Make sure you stay faithful to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get into his word and, and read it mm -hmm. and follow it. And your faith will grow. Amen. Amen. Pastor, any Praise final words? Lord. Wow, that would be really encouraging to all of us that we may see the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ and uh, understand his word. He came in person and he accomplished his... Uh, mission at the cross of Calvary, but he did not stop there. He gave us his word. And uh, just like Hebrew chapter uh, 4, 16 tells us that let's keep coming to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and receive from the Lord the grace that would enable us stand in times of needs hmm. because it is the beauty of the Lord Jesus Christ, the glory of the Lord Jesus Christ that sustained us, as well as His Word. Amen. And to uh, encourage everyone of us, you know, uh, in the world, we praise God that, uh, you know, uh, we can see the bright side of this challenge. Right. The light at the end of the tunnel. Amen. We are praying here in the U.S. that uh, finally... Uh, uh, the, the good president would uh, somewhat uh, gather all those experts and uh, design uh, approach to reopen the economy. Because, uh, you know, that's our prayer. We cannot, uh, uh, w because everything that America will do, it will influence the world. Right. And so um, we praise God that we have seen uh, what the Lord is doing in answering our prayers. And um, the projection that uh, there will be about 200,000 death toll uh, early this month, but uh, it's very it's very low. Uh, we appreciate you, uh, mga nurses and doctors who are really working hard, but we also appreciate all Christians around the world praying for this. And so uh, we pray that uh, the Lord will bless us and uh, we will see the glory of the Lord, the beauty of the Lord as we understand his word in times of crisis. Thank you, uh, my big brother, for uh, sharing the word. It was uh, truly uh, very encouraging, taken from uh, the book of John, chapter 4. And uh, I'm, I'm blessed. Uh, this is your third time to share to uh, our people out there and to anyone who is uh, connected with us. And let's continue to pray. And uh, would you please just pray for sure. them? Just one last comment. Uh, Remember I mentioned about this affliction. Until they do open up the economy, uh, be patient. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Amen. Because I really believe that for every one of us, God is speaking to us. Amen. Concerning where we're at in our relation with Him, what we need to do in our life of walking with Him. Amen. And being, being about His business. Yes. Of, of taking, look at this man did. He went back home and his whole family came to Christ. Mm -hmm. So I'm praying that while this affliction is happening, make sure that you have 
spiritual ears that are listening mm -hmm. to the words of God. So let's pray. Amen. Father, we do thank you, Lord, for uh, this time of devotion together. Lord, I thank you for Pastor Thin, Lord. Amen. Uh, Lord, it's been a wonderful uh, the Lord. A brotherly love, Lord, that we have experienced. Uh, you have knit our hearts together. Amen. And Lord, Lord, he has great love for you and a great love for Hallelujah. his church. Praise the Lord. And so, Lord, I want to pray for Pastor Thim while mm -hmm. he's away from his church. I want to Amen. pray that you protect him. Thank you, Lord. I want to pray, Lord, that you encourage him. I mm -hmm. pray for his family at this time. Mm -hmm. Oh, God, Lord, just... Just you, bring Jesus. comfort to his family, Lord, and protect Hallelujah. them. And then, Lord, thank you for his wonderful church, mm -hmm. Lord. Uh, you have blessed mm -hmm. this man with such a, a mm -hmm. wonderful congregation that loves him dearly. Mm -hmm. And, and so, Lord. Lord, I want to pray, Lord, even as they've heard this message today, Lord, Amen. I pray that they will continually to have hearts open to the beauty mm -hmm. of Christ, the words of Christ, and that, that this church in, in the Philippines that they would be a church that would be used mightily for mm -hmm. the furtherance of the kingdom. And Amen. pray, Lord, for those who even right now, who, who have been listening, but they, they struggle you, with Jesus. unbelief. Dear Lord Jesus, mm -hmm. meet them right where they're at for your compassion and love. For the name of Jesus, we pray this. Amen. 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 Thank you, and God bless. See God you bless. again uh, uh, tomorrow. Thank you.